Hey guys, it's me Annie Ease, and today I am going to be sharing with you the top five things that SF Mayer's book Murder in Absentia made me research. Number five, watered wine. Watered wine, hmm. There's a lot of watering of wine going on in that book. And I drank a lot of wine in my days, but I haven't been pouring water into it. So I went on a journey of discovery. Let's do a little bit together, shall we? So <laughs> there is something called sugar of lead, which was a deadly sweetener. And we have the question, did it, it kill people? Did it overdose people who liked the sweetness? So ancient Romans used sugar of a lead to sweeten their wine and it killed them. Fun fact. Um, <laughs> but hey, if you're enjoying your wine and unwinding, what's a little lead? Number four, ancient sailing vessels. So I, <laughs> I have sanded and caulked and worked on wooden sailboats a lot growing up. Um, I helped sew sails where we had like, um, we had a big 1800 style sewing machine where you have a big wheel and then, you know, you turn the foot on this, I'll, I'll find a picture, it's this big iron thing. And modern sewing machines are not going to be tough enough to sew sails but they are. And I remember standing there in the living room, feeding in as my father sewed sails. And anyway, I have, <laughs> suffice to say, I spent many afternoons and days and nights of my life as a young person working on sailboats. So I think that I know a lot about, you know, that sort of thing, like repairing that, but ancient sailboats and ancient vessels in general, I hadn't done a lot of studying about. So Felix does a little bit of sailing and so I had to look them up. They definitely looked a bit different and they had a lot of people rowing them when, um, when the wind was not cooperating. So for us, we had a motor when thing, the wind wasn't cooperating, but once in a while, things would go awry. I remember one time, this isn't ancient, but this is for real. One time we got stranded in the water because the motor wouldn't work and there was no wind and we ended up getting tugged back. <laughs> anyway, ancient sailing vessels. Number three, togas. So pretty much all I knew about togas was that people wear them if they join sororities or fraternities, which I would never was part of such a thing. So that didn't come up for me. Um, <laughs> and I just kind of imagined one thing, but through the book, I learned that there were fancy togas for fancy events and less fancy for less fancy events. Um, let's, let's give it a, let's give it a look. See, we're going to, do a brief search. This is so fun to do it like this, I think. Um, what do we got? Toga. Okay, where do we go? Oh my god, the first thing, one of the first things that pops up is how three ways to make a toga out of a bed sheet on WikiHow. So in case you are dying to have one, you can go ahead and have them. So a toga, which I didn't realize, is between 12 and 20 feet in length, which is so long. I have this scarf and I, I love scarves. I'm a big scarf person. I like to use them as shawls and I wrapped my hair up in them, all kinds of things to just have that. But can you imagine having to drag around 20 feet of fabric just wrapped around your body? I think that I would have a problem. I think I would. Um, okay. so. This is a fun fact, this is from Wikipedia. As women gradually adopted the stola, the toga was recognized as formal wear for Roman citizen men. Women engaged in prostitution might have been the main exception to this rule. 
The type of toga worn reflected a citizen's rank in the civil hierarchy, which was interesting when I read his book, because that's how I, I started learning about that, about how the toga, you could kind of instantly know if somebody was of what social class. So, interesting. Number two, <laughs> brothels. That's right. Reading Asaf Mera's book, Murder in Absentia, got me thinking, hmm, I have to know, what did these ancient brothels look like? So, I went on an exploration and I found out some things. Brothels operated out of taverns a lot of the time. And what they've kind of come up with is that the main way that they know that it was a brothel and a tap house was that there'd be multiple entries because, you know, if you're going to go frequent a prostitute, you want to be able to come in and come out quickly and not have to linger and have a, you know, maybe a back way entrance. I don't know. But anyway, there's tons of different doors to all these little rooms and the little rooms is how they knew prostitutes, ancient prostitutes. Hey, this is good to know. You have to know about your ancient prostitutes. All right. The number one thing that Asaf's book made me research was a fish sauce. <laughs> so in the book, Felix likes to eat his fish sauce and he does go to a place where they are making fish sauce and stuff. And so of course I had to look it up. Why wouldn't I look it up? Um, and I'm gonna do that right now. So, fish sauce. <laughs> they have to ferment it and it was smelly and th there's pictures out there of ancient fish sauce production places. So you can see how they separated the areas for the different processes. Processes. Um, I'm not gonna say that I'm an expert. I am so far from being an expert and I have not eaten fish sauce but I like to read about it. And now when, I'm, when I do my very first, just I did a preliminary search, I'm seeing modern fish sauce. So I should have saved my links, but I did research fish sauce quite a lot and had a, a lot of fun doing so because what a random thing. So I've read a lot of books on Rome, but usually I'm reading about the emperors and um, you know you don't really find out things about their day-to-day -day life like how they got their fish sauce unless you go digging a little deeper which I think is really fun um, but hey that's just me so those are the top five things that the book made me research feel free to research and come up with your own top five when you read the book because you're bound to find something that you get curious about unless you're the non-curious sort which i just can't imagine all right guys well i am going to finish my tea i hope that you have tea too and i'll talk to you next time goodbye